Hello subscribers and welcome to another video from Paraplayers and if you noticed in a couple of other videos ago I did a little bit of a Q&A which was a bit of a chance for you my subscribers to get to know me and I could get into the mindset of some of my subscribers and of course we had the usual the usual stuff from the usual people is the earth flat yes it is and the other ones which I won't get into about sniffing apples and all that sort of stuff it's a bit of an insider joke thing going on so I'm going to jump straight in. No messing about here. I'm going to be brutally honest with you on all these questions and answers. And let's jump in and get the first question. And the first question is... Dr. Dew asks, Why did you join the paratroopers and was it hard going? Okay, I don't know if I've got like bloody youth Hitler haircut going on here. It's because of my hat on I didn't spike it up today. Right, let's get this out of the way. Let's get this completely out of the way. I wasn't, well, I kind of was in the paras, but I wasn't in the paras. I w I'm not a Walt. I would never try and take any credit for anything that wasn't deserved. Basically, going back probably about 10 years now, I, I lived in Pudsey, and near me was four para, Pudsey. And it was during the whole Iraq war, the Afghanistan thing was going on. And every day I used to drive past the barracks, and I felt there was a real sense of respect. Every time I went past, I used to salute. I know it sounds crazy. Just a real respect for what those guys were doing. I'm very, very, very patriotic, Queen and Country and all that. And I just felt at that time it was, if I didn't try, I wouldn't know whether it was for me. And I felt it was my duty as a red-blooded Englishman to give my bit and try. And if it, if it worked, it didn't work, blah, blah, blah. And I was fully prepared to go to Iraq. And if I died, it would have been for Queen and Country. Now, I joined the Paras and I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie here. It was a part of your life where it's something you are never ever gonna forget even though I only had a small taste of it and there'll be all the ex-military guys out there saying oh fucking hell fucking hell but for me that small stint I was in for seven months and I left before my cadder actually went to Bryce Norton for jump training and there are certain parts of that training over that seven months that are just it's in here you just it's just an experience that it's hard to explain to other people what it was like being up at Catrick for three days staying out in the woods and then going on stag at night somebody would come and wake you up at three in the morning your turn getting the night vision because there was only uh, four pairs of night vision at that time putting the night vision on going around the perimeter checking all this sort of stuff we were told that possibly some of the staff as well would be playing up for they would come into the perimeter you had to stop them password all this sort of stuff and I just remember being in Catterick uh, I think my stag was about half three in the morning putting the night vision on, walking around, weapon in hand, full kit on, thinking, this is just the coolest fucking thing ever. It's just, I can't believe I'm here with a weapon in my hands in, at Catrick with night vision on. God, I'm getting excited just thinking about how awesome it was. Um, turning the envy off, and it was, I mean, when I say pitch black, you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. It was so black. And all I can remember is taking them off, and I heard an owl, uh, sort of, doo, you know, hooting away in the distance absolutely hauntingly incredible incredible um negative sides to it are when I, when when you think the pt and being fit you have to be fit at that time before i actually joined i was going to the gym four or five times a week i was a bit of a beefcake i'm right skinny little one what was now i thought i'd breeze through it fuck me i ain't kidding i am not fucking kidding that's off to them they're like fucking iron men these guys uh, I think there was, was it 35, 40 people joined the CADA when I joined. When I when I, when I I left after seven months due to work, there was only about eight of us left. And that was purely down to the, how difficult the PT or the tabbing was, tactical advance to battle. Up at Catterick, up at five, you do a, a basic run five miles, nothing. Then you'd have your breakfast, do some lessons, training, map reading, navigation skills, camouflage, all this cool stuff. And then it's like, never tell you, it's right. Like, kit on 40k 45k kit boots rifle i'm gonna do an eight mile tab and when i say difficult no words are now are gonna be able to describe to you how difficult that experience was even as a fit lad i was fit back then spewing up this fucking milk stuff was coming out all the time and i struggled to keep up with the it's like the quick walk bit of a not a mince walk but you know what I mean it's like this sort of thing I found that hard to keep up with and yet when it was the run and the jog I got into a steady rhythm you've got to switch your mind off fine but when it came to that long stride for some reason I couldn't keep up 
But big myself up, I never went on the fucking van. There was an ambulance followed us around because people were passing out. People were being sick, as I said. You lag far too behind. You go on the van, so you failed. I wouldn't. That's never fail, lads. Never fucking failed. So an amazing experience. But as I said, I left you to work because as my hours and jobs are so random, I don't know where I am all over the place. It really was full time. And anybody who tells you that back then when it was the territorials, it's now the, uh, is it, uh, not the regulars, I forgot what they call it now. They've changed the name recently because everybody was slagging it off. Anybody who tells you it's part time is talking bollocks because you have to do what the, the full time regulars are doing, but in a quarter of the time. And... You also go off to Afghanistan and Iraq and don't think that they're going to put you at the back because you're in the TA. They actually mix you out into different units. But anyway, I'm not going to waffle on about that. An amazing experience, but under no way would I ever say that I was a para. Purely, I set the gamer tag up going way back on YouTube and on Xbox Live. And I put para because I have just a pure respect for those guys. So that's why. Gamer tag, para. That's a long one. Let's move on. Next question by Noah. 2011. Can I have your airsoft guns? LOL. Can you bollocks? How did I find out about airsoft? Well, because I had that little stint in four para, the whole military thing, and I was always interested in. I was in 16 AA and three commando, which was a mil sim armor, that sort of thing. So it was like always there, but never quite. I was just because I expected the whole sport. To be full of nerdy little teenagers running around thinking they were cod, 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 you know, uh, quick scope sniper elites. So I just thought it wasn't for me, and it wasn't until somebody who I used to work with a long time ago in the e-commerce side of the industry actually broke off and, and got into airsoft because he was a, a pilot and all this sort of stuff. And he just happened to mention one time I think it was on LinkedIn. Oh, I'm doing airsoft now. A little bit interesting. Why don't you come over to the shop and have a look? And it's just like as soon as I walked up those steps and opened the door. It was like, like Nirvana. All the weapons racked up the MP5s, the shotguns, the the, the saw, the, the AKs, the MP7s. There was the Barrett, there was the Jimpy. I just thought, even if I don't get into airsoft, gimme, gimme, gimme. Oh, gimme, gimme. I want, I want, I want. It's like almost getting your hand on that military tech, but not having to have a license. Well, you do have to have a license, but it's only a UK license. You can have them. Even if you don't want to play airsoft, there's a lot of people in this community who don't even play. They just want an MP5 on the wall there, and there's an AK-47 and an AKSU and a... Why not? If you love weapons and gun porn... Too addictive. No, I'm doing my Q&A for YouTube. <sighs> uh, no, I didn't because I left it too late for uh, B&Q. Next question comes from Anon Ra. Una Ra! Sounds like some Egyptian. This question is, at what age did you take part in Airsoft? What sites do you currently play at? And how many BBs do you roughly go through per session? Mucho appreciatio. Well, Anon, I'm 43. And I know you're all thinking, God damn, that boy looks like he's in his 20s. Yeah, from a distance, maybe. When I get up close, you'll soon see the wrinkles in the bags. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm 43, and I got into it at 43. I've only been playing Airsoft now for, God believe it or not, probably about four or five months now, so really not that long. And regarding how many BBs do I go through, all depends on what class you play. When I was playing as DMR, I think I probably used six mags throughout the whole day. Last game, I think I used 12 mags, and each mag holds, uh, was it 120-odd? So probably about 1,200 BBs per game. Next question is by Sikik. Apologies if I've got that wrong. And the question is, when getting into Airsoft, would buying all the gear before playing be smart or would buying the gear as you learn your playstyle be smarter? This is a really good question. And <clears throat> I'll say to you what somebody told to me who'd been in the industry for like 15 years. The most difficult aspect of Airsoft is getting the head right. And by that, I mean the goggles, the face protection, uh, the masks, whether you want a balaclava, whether you want a baseball cap. That is the hardest aspect of this. And I've bought probably three sets of eye protection. I've tried two, three different types of balaclavas. I've tried two different face masks here. 
it really is an individual thing here because you go out and buy something and think that's really Gucci. I really like that. Such as the face uh, mesh here. It, it's curved to your face. You think, yeah, I'll have that. It looks cool. Try it on in the shop. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Get home and then realize that when you put it on and you look down the sight of the rifle, this is in the way and you can't get down the sight. Then you need to get a razor for your scope and so forth and stuff. And it goes on and on and on. As many of you know, I've been having problems with my goggles at the minute, steaming up. Something else to consider, so now I'm trying something else. And then there's fans and then there's this. And if you just get glasses, you get your teeth smashed out. And then there's this and this. And... So in that aspect, would I say it's better to rent a gun? Do you know what? It's a difficult one to answer because if you feel like you really want to get into it, then you could spend 120 quid on a weapon and a few mags. Go out and try it. If you don't like it, you haven't lost too much. If you're on the fence, just get a rental gun from the site. But what I will say is set yourself a budget because Airsoft is terrible. Once you actually start to get into it and you look at the clothing and then the boots and then the gloves and then the weapon and then the scope and then the silencer and then the foregrip and then the extra mags and then the speed loader and then <laughs> the tack vest and then the peltors and then the radios and then this and, then, and, then, and it goes on and on and on it never ends it never ends and, and it's just like tack vest then you need a belt and then you need this and this and you don't need all that to be honest with you so the, there are certain sites out there where they send me newsletters and it's like, I can't look because it's just going to be something I want because it looks so fucking Gucci. So what you might be better off doing is, is having a look around, finding a style of look that you want. I knew that I wanted to be a private military company so that I could mix it up. I wasn't limited to just DPMs or just, you know, a certain look. I could mix and match, which is a good thing, really, but also a bad thing because it's never ending. Anyway... Find the look that you want, stick with it, get yourself a fairly, a fairly inexpensive weapon to start off with and just play a few games before you want to specialise. Now, I, as you well know, I went DMR role because I didn't want to get my teeth smashed in and all this sort of stuff a little bit further out, but then I found it I want to get back in the action a little bit and like brrr, full auto, which I've been really enjoying. And I personally have always, always wanted a saw, so I've got one, but now it's like I've got three rifles and I ain't even been doing it that long, so it's getting a little bit ridiculous now you know i'd like to have a got sniper and i'd like to go with this and then uh, uh, have a go with an uzi and, and pyro and this and this just set yourself a budget pick an assault class as your first one don't go specialized such as a uh, support gunner because you're fucking heavy and it's expensive sniper very cool but then you're going to want the ghillie suit and then then you're going to want a sidearm and you, it's stick with the assault get yourself some face protection decent face protection spend more money on that at the beginning then get the rest of the Gucci stuff, some decent gloves, and just go out and fucking enjoy yourself. And don't worry about everything else. It'll come eventually. Just watch the purse strings. Okay, next question is by Midge Prohi. And I've probably said that completely wrong, so I do apologise. And it's questions... I'm going to break it down because I can't do them all. Um, it's questions are, if you could go back and do it again... What would I change differently? And do you prefer running in a team or running solo? And finally, how do you find out about Airsoft and when I started? Let's do that one again. Okay, so my... Um, okay, next question is... My progi. I've probably spelt like a bleat long. It sounds Polish. It may not be, so I apologise if it's not. Um, hey, Per, I've been airsofting for about five years now, and it's always interesting to get other people's opinions. If I could go back and do anything different, would I? And do I prefer running in a team or solo? And finally, how did you find out about airsoft? So let's let's cover the first question first. Do I prefer... Um Okay, so the first part of that question is, would I do anything differently if I could go back and do it again? The answer to that is probably going to be yes, and it all comes down to face protection. It's a real difficult one. I wish I'd actually got out in the field and asked a few people about face protection, but people who played in the same sort of style as I like to, like to blast in, get out, be a bit sneaky, you know, this sort of thing. But it's when you're running around and it's cold... 
and these these steam up it's the most frustrating thing oh, most frustrating thing ever so i wish i'd asked a few more people about their face protection and why they chose them before i went and put down 80 quid 150 and then another 60 on diff three different types of face protection which two of them are now absolutely garbage Do I prefer running solo or in a team? I actually prefer running in a team. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the good thing about Airsoft is, is that when you're on Team Blue or Team Red or whatever team you're on, there is a real com camaraderie when it comes to actually being out in the field. And a lot of times when you go onto the field with a couple of friends, one of them will die, they'll bleed out or whatever, and they have to go back, and you lose each other, and then the, the action moves around the field. And the amount of times that you just find a couple of other guys and you communicate you know eyes on over there too all this sort of stuff and it just works even people you don't know there is that real camaraderie with the team and i really really do enjoy that aspect of airsoft great teamwork even though you actually don't know these people next question comes from fist stomp i know this isn't airsoft related but i'm planning on joining three para when i'm 2021 20, what would you recommend to to be doing to start training eating, exercise, etc. And what was P Company like for you? Remember, I didn't do P Company. I left before Bryce. But one thing I can tell you is run, 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 forest, run, fucking run. And when I mean run, I mean run. If you really, really are serious about this, you want to make sure that you're running at least 10 to 12 miles a week. Go out. At the start, I think I was doing three miles three times a week just to build it up until I could get to that five and because running for me was always a bad thing even though I was quite a fit lad running I just found difficult I got shin splints and all sorts but the one of the things that the four para the, the PTs up there used to teach us to do is you know you get lampposts where you live it may be different if you're in America I don't actually say where you are lampposts jog from one to the next one sprint like fuck to the next one jog do that probably eight or nine times and believe me it's gonna work your chest is gonna be fucking caving in you can be coughing up phlegm and it's gonna work it's really gonna fucking hurt but if you can do this your fitness level will go through the roof i remember there's a hill near us at Carvley, which is just near the barracks and as you go up gradually it's really steep down past Carvley golf course and on the way back it's like fucking hell and for the first three four months i was always lagging i mean really struggling coming back up that hill but i stuck with this telegraph thing because i spoke to the pt and says look i'm really struggling with running what can i do told me to do this fucking hurt and i can remember probably five six months in when we came running back up i had no bother whatsoever in fact as it levels off up at the top i actually asked if i could sprint back to the barracks which there was just i don't know it's almost like waist downwards didn't even feel it i don't feel anything now in my 40s um <laughs> I actually wanted to sprint back. That's how my fitness. It was like, you, you don't forget that. The legs are just churning away on the mat automatically. And it was an amazing feeling. I was on such a high after that, thinking, God, I used to struggle with that. And it really did work. Apart from that, they told us just to do press-ups and pull-ups. Press-ups, pull-ups, and run. Run your fucking ass off. And you'll have no bother. I'm not going to say that P Company is going to be easy. <laughs> but if you want to do the rest of it and... Make it a little bit easier, you're still going to find it difficult, then that is certainly, certainly going to help you. Question from Mark. Para, would you take me to Airsoft one time, please? Does it hurt when you get hit? Also, what is it you actually do for a job and how do you fit everything in? So let's take the first question. Would I take you to Airsoft? Not really. I'm not, I'm not your papa. I'm not going to chaperone you around. Just go to an Airsoft. The good thing about this community is... There's no prejudice to new players coming in. There's no prejudice to the amount of kit you've got, or whether you've got too much or whether you've got too little. I really was surprised when I came into Airsoft that there is none of that. In fact, there's there's not, not even any prejudice really to age. There's people who, who I've played with who've been 18, 19, and there's people who've been playing up there with an M1 Grand who are flipping it, pushing 65, 70. There really is no age limit to Airsoft, so really don't worry about going to a site and jumping in and having a game. You'll absolutely love it, and the community will make you feel very, very welcomed. Gadding, does it actually hurt? The answer to that is going to be yes and no. The majority of the time, I can't emphasise enough 
face protection. I've seen so many people walking around on these sites with just a pair of glasses on, but they tend to be sniper or DMR, so they're a little bit further out of the action. But believe, believe you me, injuries in airsoft can include your teeth smashed out, bust lips, and actually getting BBs embedded under the skin because even though assault weapons limited to 350, that's 350 foot a second. And if you're shooting somebody under 10 foot, because it does happen, I have seen it happen, yes, it effing hurts. But when you've got the protection on, it's not too bad. I can honestly say that being shot with a decent pair of gloves on from 50, 60, maybe, maybe 100 foot out, is equivalent to taking an elastic band, stretching it probably about that far, and letting it go on the back of your hand or something like that. It's like, oof, it stings, it hurts, and then you completely forget about it. The only time I've ever been shot, and it was really quite painful, was when I got shot on the end of the finger, directly on the end of the finger, the knuckle, and I actually took one, was it? I can't remember if it was the neck or the forehead, but that was shot from probably 10 foot away, and that was a little bit painful. It left a nice little welt and a bruise. But apart from that, Nothing to worry about. Just make sure you get some decent face protection. What is it I actually do for a job? Well, I'm going to get arty farty and sound cooler than it probably is. I'm actually a creative director. I'm self-employed and I work in the advertising and marketing industry. I started off as a, a graphic designer a long time ago and then moved over into motion graphics and video. And as I was a Quite a creative designer at the time, moving into motion graphics was just a matter of changing the graphics and moving them around on screen and I loved the special effects and all the cool stuff that goes with it. And I actually did some directing, I did a lot of the films for uh, Crime Stoppers, which you may have not seen. I've done stuff at, uh, let me think, I've done stuff with Mika Hakkinen at Silverstone, I've done all sorts here, there and everywhere, a little bit, a little bit of TV adverts, but mainly business to business in the corporate and advertising sector. So at the minute, I tend to do a lot of motion graphics, and that includes clients such as Padgett, Parker. Um, I shouldn't be name dropping because some of them are under NDA, but let's just say I've worked with some very large companies. But as a sole trader, um, my own business, I work for the marketing companies that then work for the bigger ones. So regarding how do I fit it all in, well, for the last three or four days, let's say, I've been doing stupid hours trying to hit a deadline for Parker uh, Italia and they wanted a, a, a film that I'd done a while back converted into Italian and blah, 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 blah. So I work ridiculous hours, which is about I always got bags under my eyes. But I'm using the same computer for work as I am for gaming and pleasure and everything else, so I'm going to be trying to split that off. And as you can tell at the minute, I am in the broom cupboard while I try and sort the rest of the house out. So that's what I do. I'm a motion graphics a filmmaker, creative director in the film industry. Now, next question comes from Michael W, and he asks... Why do you think the Earth is flat? Education across the nation. Now, I could have a whole series, a whole encyclopedia of videos on this topic. And yes, the Earth is flat. The moon is artificial. And it's been, it's been, it was put there by an ancient civilization which actually monitors the people of the Earth. And yes, this is what I believe, and I probably will do another video on some education for all my subscribers out there. And I'll explain why the Earth is flat, why there are structures on the moon, why there are also structures on Cydonia. And when I talk about aliens and things like that on this planet, we are the aliens. When people talk about the greys and all this sort of thing out there, then it's not a different species. It is us. We left this planet Earth billions of years ago for whatever known reason we left yeah they evolved over those billions of years and they became more well they transformed themselves into what we now know as greys and other things like that but that's for another video that's for the hedgehog huh? across the nation and i'll do that in another video but in the meantime that'll bring our q and a to an end i hope you found some of that interesting. Movember, before you ask. And um, I'll probably do another one at another time. I've quite enjoyed this, actually. Something a little bit different. I am going to be doing more airsoft videos, but I'm going to be trying using some more cameras to make the footage more interesting. I just haven't got time and go around it with all these bloody gadgets and everything else. 
but I will get around to it at some point. But in the meantime, I salute you, my subscribers. Thank you for taking the time to watch this as if you've got this far. Excuse me, Yorkshire tea. I shall see you in another video coming real soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.